Assalamu alaikum students and today we will discuss about the plant classification and nomenclature. From this lecture students will know about the evolutionary origin of plants, will understand about the process of plant identification and classification, will also know about the Aristotle classification system and why this uh, classification was replaced. Uh, students will also know about the now what uh, criteria do modern taxonomists use to classify an organism? Okay, uh, what is the evolutionary origin of plants? The answer is, ancestors of plants were photosynthetic protesters. Green algae gave rise to land plants. Green algae probably most similar uh, to the ancestor plants, but um, algae laid true roots, uh, stamped leaves, and complex reproductive st structures such as flower and cones. Okay, why green algae are the plant closest living relatives? So because green algae use the same type of chlorophyll as two land plants. Green algae store food as starch as uh, do uh, plants and uh, have the cell wall made up of cellulose similar in composition as land plants. How did uh, plants invade and flourish on land? The traditional world may be green now, but it did not start out the way. More than 400 million years ago, the land was barren and inhospitable to life. From evolutionary point of view, it was a land of opportunity, free of competitors, free of predators, and full of carbon dioxide and sunlight. So once natural selection had shaped the adaptations that helped the plants to uh, live in the terrestrial land. When plant pioneers the land, they face a range of challenges posed by the terrestrial environment. The plant body is no more bath in the nutrient solution and the air tends to dry things out. Due to change in the structure of plant body, These conditions favor the evolution of the structures that support the body vessels and transport water and nutrients to all parts of plant. The resulting adaptations from water to land include some structural features that arose earlier in plant evolution. And now these changes are common to all land plants and they include uh, for example, root or root-like structure, reproductive structures as in flowers and contain spores and gametes. Uh, stem supports uh, plant and may be uh, uh, perform a photosynthesis. A leaf perform photosynthesis and it contain uh, cuticles. A waxy cuticle covers the stem and leaves of plants. A stomata are tiny pores in the leaves that allow for gas exchange. Okay, uh, land plants also contains uh, the saphenic uh, substance uh, called lignin, uh, which is a rich polymer of alcohol that conducting vessels and support the plant body, helping the plant expose maximum surface area to sunlight. Life on land also required new method of uh, transporting sperms uh, to egg, unlike uh, aquatic forms. A successful group of uh, land plants are the method of gamete and zygote dispersals uh, that are independent of water. The other success is its structure that protects uh, developing embryo from drying out. Okay, uh, let's uh, discuss about the classification of plants. Since ancient times, uh, various scientists have attempted to devise a system for grouping and naming of living organisms. However, in 18th century, Carlos Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, invented a scientifically accurate uh, system. His uh, system used internationally today and was an outstanding contribution to the biology. Linnaeus rejected the common names of the plants and give each one a scientific name made up of Latin words and it is always desirable to use scientific name because 
they are never duplicate they are used by people of all countries they are usually descriptive they show a systematic relationship to other organism plant taxonomy has two main aims to arrange the kind of plant in a scheme of classification that will show their true relationship mean all classification is based on structural uh, scientific similarities okay and the other is identify all kinds of plants in scientific work it is essential and uh, to apply in names with precision and uh, because the validity of research depends on correct identification of material involved and to be able to achieve this the taxonomist must utilize the method and resources of all this major field of botanical investigation the morphologist gives him an understanding of form and uh, structure the physiologist can point out the requirements for the existence of physiological species that appear identical the ecologist can give information about the relationship between plants and environment the genetics and cytologists contribute information concerning inheritance and reproduction as well as the chromosome number and its morphology okay students so now we will discuss about the history of uh, taxonomy and in this we will uh, describe the Aristotle classification system and explain why it was uh, replaced, explain the linear system of uh, um, classification and identify the main criteria he used to classify organisms and what are the seven level of organization that Linnaeus used to uh, categorize organism and will explain what criteria do modern taxonomists use to classify an organism. Okay, organisms were first classified by the Greek philosopher Aristotle. Aristotle classified all living organisms as either a plant or an animal. He further classified animals by where they lived and classified plants by their size. What are some problems with this classification system? Some animals live in more than one habitat during their lives. Most plants start small and grow larger. These problems were recognized by Carlos Linnaeus. Okay, Carlos Linnaeus is considered as the father of taxonomy because in the 17th century he developed a way to name and organize species uh, that we still use today his two most important contribution to taxonomy were the hierarchical classification system and the system of binomial nomenclature he suggested a system for naming plants and animals the binomial nomenclature this is this consists of giving every organism two names generic name generally similar to one another for example pear is for pear and apple and specific name distinguishes the member of genus from one another for example pyrus cuminus for pear and pyrus amellus for apple uh, so in 1735 he published his first edition of Systema Natura, the system of nature which was a small pamphlet explaining his new system of the classification of nature. In Systema Natura, Linnaeus classified nature into a hierarchy. Living organisms are separated into two large kingdoms, animal and plant. Each kingdom is uh, divided into smaller groups known as phyla or division mostly division is used in plant kingdom while phyla is used for animal kingdom each phyla in turn divided into classes classes were uh, further divided into orders a division of an order is family these were further uh, divided into genera and a genus is composed of one or more species. 
genus and species are used in scientific names. Okay, uh, what are the rules for writing scientific names? The common name of the plants vary in different parts of the country and more than one name is often applied to the same plants in the same language. Therefore, a scientific name is important to use in every language and in every part of the world. As we know that a linear uh, system of giving each organism a scientific name of two parts is called binomial nomenclature. When we use the Latin name of uh, an organism, remember students, the first word refer to the genus and always begin with capital letter, okay? The species name begins with a small letter. Uh, for example, uh, Brassica campestris. Here the word Brassica uh, represents uh, the genus and campestris represents the species. Okay, a genus is a group of closely related species. Okay, organism placed in the same genus have similar structure. While a species is defined as the largest group of organisms and that can interbreed, okay, to produce a fertile offspring. Uh, students, uh, what is the difference between these plants? Uh, are they different from each other? Yes, they are different because uh, one produce a uh, ear of cone if you look at a uh, maize picture and the other produce small grains uh, for example uh, sorghum and wheat. They have small grains. They are different in grain head, spike and ear of cone. They are different in color they grow at different heights so they all are different from each other okay and uh, these are some uh, specific crops uh, having uh, botanical names uh, first one is wheat triticum estuum barde hollium vulgare rice oryza sativa maize yamis oat amina sativa sorghum sorghum bicolor tobacco nicotiana tobacum Securum officinarum for sugarcane, P. abyssum sativum, chickpea, scissor, uh, eritinum. Okay, and the botanical name uh, for uh, tomato is uh, Solanum lycopersicum for soybean glycine mix, for cotton gusicum hirsutum, for jute corcoris uh, capsularis, uh, for D. camellia uh, sinensis. Now let's uh, discuss about the agronomic classification of plant. Uh, the first one is cereal or grain crop. A grass grown for its edible seed. Examples are wheat, rice, maize, oats, sorghum, etc. Legumes or uh, pulsate. A uh, seed uh, crop belong to family leguminosity and are grown for their edible seeds. Example hmm, includes uh, peanut, beans, pigeon pea, uh, soybean, etc. Forage crops, crops which are grazed by animals, when these crops are harvested as a whole plants and cure uh, for animal feed, they are termed as fodder. Mostly uh, belongs to graminae or leguminosity. A root and tuber crop, vegetable crops grown for underground uh, parts like root, bulb, rhizome, corm and uh, stem tubers. Example are sugar beet, carrot, turnip, sweet potato, potato, yam, etc. Uh, fiber crops, crops which are grown for their uh, fiber, these are used in making textile, for example, uh, rope and rug. Um, examples include cotton and jute, etc. Next is uh, sugar crops. Uh, sugar crops are grown for their uh, sugar contents. Example are sugar cane and sugar beet. Vegetable crops, crops which are grown for the edible leaves, uh, shoot, flower, fruits, and seed. Examples include uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, spinach, etc. Oil, seed crops, crops which are grown for the purpose of extraction of oil uh, from their seeds. Examples are mustard, peanuts, sunflowers, safflower, soybean, etc. 
Okay, and let's discuss about the national symbols of Pakistan. And uh, Udar uh, cedar is the national tree of Pakistan. Jasmine is the national flower. Mango is the national fruit. Uh, if you look at the uh, emblem of Pakistan, uh, she is surrounded by a floral wreath of jasmine. Our shield is depicted in the center of emblem uh, presenting the four major crops of Pakistan that is cotton, jute, tea and wheat. Uh, students, uh, this is all about uh, today's lecture. If you have any question, we will discuss it in our question answer session. Thank you.